you from the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Good morning. It is uh, like 4.45 right now and it's really windy so we're hoping that they don't cancel the snorkeling out at the Great Barrier Reef because yeah, we really want to go, but if the weather is not good, then they can cancel it. And it's really, really windy out, but we have to drive about two hours to get to the place that we're leaving from. So hopefully it's not that windy there. Um, they said that it's going to be really, really choppy and rough because of the wind. <laughs> they recommended taking seasickness tablets and stuff, but the ones that they sell has caffeine in it, so I can't take those. So I'm really hoping that I'm not chucking overboard or like, oh yeah, oh gosh. <laughs> The water in the bay area was beautiful and calm, but it didn't stay that way for long. The staff quickly started handing out vomit bags to everyone, putting on some gloves and getting garbage bags. Oh, the baby's crying! So they're handing out um, sick bags to like everyone. And I feel kind of bad because people are freaking out and Joe and I are just cracking up laughing. <laughs> <laughs> there was a stop at Hamilton before we hit the reef and they said that between this island and the reef it's going to be way worse than it was earlier. So for the sake of Ash and her dad, um, I ran downstairs because we were on the upper deck before and it was like really rocking a lot so I'm hoping that it's a little bit better for them and Ash doesn't completely regret coming on this trip today. <laughs> Keep an eye out for the constantly changing colors of water, all of which were gorgeous. We also got to see some whales on the way to the Great Barrier Reef. This was our first peek at the Great Barrier Reef. It's no wonder it can be seen from space. Look at the outstanding color difference. This reef stretches for over 2,600 kilometers and is made up of over 2,900 individual reefs. And at last, we were at the pontoon at the Great Barrier Reef. There was a lot to do besides just snorkeling, which was great because they specifically told me not to go snorkeling until it was closer to the point of leaving because the water would be calmer for me at that time. As soon as we got onto the pontoon, we headed below to see some of the local wildlife. This was my first time trying to color correct underwater footage. The further underwater you get, the more washed out the natural red and brown tones get. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please comment below to let me know. Hopefully I can keep improving my color correction. If you have money to spare, you can pay extra to go on tours, scuba dives, helicopter rides, and even stay on the pontoon at the reef overnight. 
There are also professional photographers that take your picture at the reef, which are, of course, available for purchase. But everything you see us do in this video is included in the main price. To get the corals to look so colorful for documentaries, filmmakers will shine lights on them, but their natural look consists more of muted tones. I noticed this in Tobago too. You may notice the white tips on the corals. That's not coral bleaching from climate change. It's actually new growth, which is a really positive sign. The Great Barrier Reef is the world's largest coral reef system. It's larger than the UK and about the size of Japan. You ready, Joe? I'm cold. It's really cold. <laughs> Winter is cold. Winter in Australia is cold. This is my first time in a wetsuit. Sunny butt. <laughs> Pro tip, it's easier to walk backwards in flippers. See the ribbon on my snorkel? We all had to fill out health forms to show we were physically able to handle snorkeling. I was required to have a ribbon due to my health conditions so that the lifeguards knew to keep an extra close watch on me. We didn't see or hear much about the harm to the reef from warming waters, which I talk about later on in this video too. One reason tour companies may not have discussed the issues facing the reef is because the damage has led to a drop in tourism here, which has impacted the local economies. Normally, over 2 million tourists visit the reef each year, and they bring over 5 billion Australian dollars with them. The largest threat to this reef, its creatures, and our amazing oceans is climate change. With the temperatures of our ocean waters rising, the oxygen levels are dropping. This leads to stress on the corals, which causes them to bleach and die. Hope is not lost for our oceans and reefs, but global changes need to be made quickly in order to save them. Please contact your local government to show support for green and eco-friendly initiatives. This reef is home to whales, dolphins, sea turtles, porpoises, seabirds, sea snakes, and over 1,500 species of fish. Approximately 10% of the world's total species of fish can be found here. The water was actually much warmer than the air, thank goodness. The current was really strong from the winds and kept pulling me back towards the boat and away from the reef. So this day proved to be more physically challenging than I had initially thought it would be. Coral grows in roughly the same way that stalactites and stalagmites do in cave systems. They build up over hundreds and thousands of years. Some dead coral in the Great Barrier Reef has been dated back as far as 20 million years. So it's important not to physically break or damage them. One wonderful thing about these types of tours is that they concentrate the tourists day after day into only certain points of the reef, leaving the rest to its natural and untouched state. All too soon, it was time to leave and head back to the mainland. A 
It's after three o'clock now. We are heading back on the boat. As you can see, my lips are still kind of a little bit purple. Maybe I stayed in the water a little bit longer than I should have. Um, but it was absolutely amazing. The colors of the fish, and I love specifically watching the uh, parrot fish eating off the coral. And if you listen like really closely, you can hear the little like crunchy sounds. Um, and I think it's really cool. But yeah, once in a lifetime opportunity because it's incredibly expensive. Um, but you can also pay to go scoop diving or take like tours while snorkeling so you can learn more about the reef, which I would have loved to learn more, but we already spent a lot of money just to come out here. You can also do like helicopter tours uh, if you have the funds, which is crazy and would be really cool. Um, I've never personally been in a helicopter, but uh, yeah, so now we're on our way back and you can tell that it's uh, a little a little rough in the water on the way back. So some people are kind of freaking out, but it's just just like a little roller coaster. No big deal. <laughs> Okay, we are home now. Um, so we are cooking up the rest of the chili that I made uh, yesterday, and we're gonna have that for dinner because it is super late. We got up before the sun came up, and we're home way after the sun went down. Um, it's been a really long day, but what a great day, actually. Um, and some things that I, I wanted to say was, I believe this is really the only company that like dominates the visits to the Great Barrier Reef. And they call themselves eco-friendly. And some of the things that I saw definitely was eco-friendly. Like, you know, the rules that they instate say, don't touch the coral, don't take the coral, don't break the coral, don't, you know, hit the coral with your fin, different things like that, which is really, really good. But because there weren't people actually out and swimming with you besides like a photographer, there wasn't anybody to really push those rules. Um, so I would have liked to see more of that because I did see a kid accidentally kick the coral and step on it with his flipper. And I saw somebody was, you know, following fish with a GoPro and they accidentally touched the coral as well, which, you know, really isn't good because it takes so long for the coral to grow. And then another thing that I do think that they can improve upon is when you go into that sub, like part sub, part boat and you're underwater, they talk a lot about the coral and the different kinds of coral and the different kinds of fish and things like that and the reef in general. But one thing that they didn't touch on was the bleaching and the way that climate change is impacting the coral reef which was so bizarre to me. Like, when when you have people spending a ton of money and, and being a tourist and everything, of course you wanna make their experience really positive and great, but I think it's really important also to educate people that these things are being destroyed and simple actions that we do can make a really big difference. Another thing that I think could have been focused more on was like the, the use of plastics and how that affects uh, the wildlife that we see there, the fish, the turtles, everything. Yeah, overall it was a really amazing experience, once in a lifetime experience, and I'm just so lucky. But I'm also really exhausted. <laughs> um, I'm really sad that we're leaving Australia tomorrow, uh, and we don't even have a, a full day. This was our last full day in Australia, but what a great way to spend it. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and more adventures that I go on. And hi, Jesse. You want to be in the video? Say hi. <laughs> Good girl. And if you've already subscribed, please hit the little bell icon next to the subscription box so that you get a notification every time I upload a new video. Also, comment below to chat with me. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you there, and I'll see you next time. Bye.